Morning. I know I've been saying this a lot lately, but watch this video. This is an extremely important video for this time of year. It's February. We're starting to get some of these days where this freaky February weather, we're in the 60s and 70s, and today we're gonna to talk about pre-scalping. We're gonna talk about pre-emergent, and I'll touch on the Jumpstart program. We'll talk about soil saturations. Bunch of stuff to cover, so hold on. Hey guys, I don't want to drag this video out, so all the lawn guides are out. The Bermuda, Zoysia, cool season, go to freelawncareguide.com, get those. Get it, it's free, it's up all the time. Also, make sure you're on our email list. We don't send out emails every day. We send out about 10 emails a year. As an example, a few days ago, I sent out, uh, Anderson's let me know they're running a sale on pre-emergent, 20% off. The only people that knew about it that were on the email list. That's it. Sign up for the email list, please. I'm gonna get my official soil temperature reading from my meat thermometer. This is not afternoon, this is 10.30 in the morning. I'm gonna come over here. Oh, I'm gonna stick it in at about three inches. Normally people tell you about 50, 51 degrees is when you wanna put down your pre-emergent. We'll look at right here. What does that say? 50 degrees. <laughs> and this isn't a fluke. I actually see sprigs of, of Bermuda over here. I'll show you in a second. But uh, 10 days from now, I looked at the 10 day forecast, we're gonna have a 77 degree high day and it's gonna be raining. But look at the Bermudas, look at the little sprigs. So see this green in here? You can probably see this little green. There's shoots of green coming up. I gotta get some pre-emergent down. Don't wait. I mean, this is the time. If you come out here and you start to see some of these little sprigs of Bermuda, that's a great indicator. Hey, I better get some pre-emergent down. I'm gonna talk about why I put down the granular first, the dangers of a liquid because of this dead brown grass. Uh, I'll just tell you, 10 to 40% of your liquid pre-emergent can be absorbed by this dead brown grass. I covered this in the last video. See this right here? If I spray water on that, what's gonna happen? It's gonna absorb it. If I spray a liquid pre-emergent on here, guess what? It's gonna absorb it. So, I can't guarantee, I can't guarantee myself how much pre-emergent's getting down. With the granular pre-emergent, I know it's a DG product. I can put it down and wet it into the soil. Next, let's talk about soil saturations. Let me show you, there's two factors we'll talk about real quick. So, sorry, straight up my camera. So when we're talking about pre-emergence and we're talking about soil saturations, it's really important to understand, especially with clay soils. Clay soils have something called silicates inside of it, and those are sort of like platelets. And when they get wet, they sort of close up and they lock down. And that's why you can dump water on a clay soil. You can dump, 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 dig it up, and underneath that will be dry because the water runs off, because the water, those silicates, those plates sort of seal it up. Clay soils, clay soils are not porous. They, the size, the the size of those holes are very, very small. It's not like sand and loamy soils. So it's very, very tiny. So the infiltration rates, I did a video on this last year, infiltration rates on, soil, on clay soils are the lowest of any soil. So it takes a long time to get water down into the soil. Also, another factor is you don't wanna come out you don't wanna come out after a rain, heavy rain event and put down a pre-emergent or something like a green shocker or something that needs to go into the soil. Why? Because your soil is already full of water and it's gonna be real hard for anything to get in, to penetrate even further down. So I always say the major first rule is you wanna look at your 10 day forecast. You want three or four days of bright sunny weather. You want dry soil. Always put pre-emergence on dry soil, number one rule. I gotta stress that. Like a green shocker, green shocker fertilizer, it's instant release. You put it on a dry soil, you water it in, it gets down in the soil, you have zero runoff, zero runoff, unlike slow release fertilizers. So you know exactly what's going into the soil. That's one of the beauties about it, no runoff. So if you take these two sponges, one is saturated, the other one is dry. If I put pre-emergent on both of them, and then I go ahead and I make have a rain event, you can see that there's only so much water that that wet soil that's already saturated can absorb and it's gonna run off. 
The same thing on the dry. The dry will actually absorb. The first thing that's gonna happen after a rain event is the water is gonna carry your chemical into the soil. Again, your water is gonna carry your chemical into the soil before it locks up. And that's the critical point. When is my soil gonna lock up and hit that saturation point in that platelet lock that I'm gonna have runoff? That's why a lot of times people say, I put down pre-emergent and man, I still have weeds. Well, you had three days of rain, you came out, put down your pre-emergent, and then the next day, then you had two more days of rain. There's a pretty good chance that a lot of that pre-emergent ran off on certain areas and you've got bit different blotches. So hope that, hope that helps you understand. Now today, since I'm gonna be applying pre-emergent down here, I figured we'd go ahead and we'd start to do some scalping, pre-scalping. Pre-scalping does something. What it does is it helps you not have to battle that really thick brown Bermuda. Start to take it down now, start to take it down now, little by little. When we do our full scalp, we take our lawn just about down to dirt in our full scalp. And I'm not gonna do that till, until March. But right now I'm gonna do a pre-scalp. We've treated our Poana. There's a little bit of yellow showing up after about three days. Um, I went ahead and I sprayed all this stuff because it sat on it for three days. I sprayed it, got it down into the root systems. It'll die off, I'm not worried about it. But right now, I've got to put down my pre-emergent. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little bit of cutting, put down the granular pre-emergent and get that all taken care of. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with Barb's lawn. <laughs> I guess maybe I'll have Ryan work on it because my brown lawn, my, my lawn out here is only about an inch, maybe inch and a half. Barb's brown lawn is like three inches. That's a lot of crap over there. All right, so. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about our jumpstart program real quick before we get going on all this scalping. I want you to remember something. It's cold. The soil microbes are very low. There's very little micro, uh, mycorrhizal fungi, which is the good fungi active right now. It's not active. Your soil has sat here for six to eight months and nothing's been done to it. Nutrients have been depleted. Leaching has occurred. So what do we do? How do we get um, the first green lawn in the neighborhood and make our lawn healthy. So when I put out my granular pre-emergent at the same time, I'm gonna put out a uh, PGF balance, which is an all fast release 10, 10, 10 with micros and iron. Even though it's fast release, it's still gonna take, oh, probably two to four weeks to get down into the soil because it's gotta have rain events, rain events, rain events. It's gonna take two to four weeks for it to get down into the soil and get down on the roots. That's why I'm putting it out now. It's not a nitrogen push. Once I do my second scalp, and once I see a green all over my lawn, that's where I'm gonna come out with green shocker. Now green shocker is an all fast release, very mild, instant fertilizer, that's a 712. I'm gonna green shocker, green shocker, green shocker for about four weeks. Once my lawn looks perfect, then I'm gonna come out with my slow release, PGF complete, and I'm pretty much done at that point. I, my lawn should absolutely look beautiful right about that point. So again, pre-emergent and my slow release 10, 10, 10. Get some nutrients so that when your lawn starts to wake up, it's waking up into an environment that has nutrients available to it, and you're not having to play catch up. Slow release fertilizers are not good for that wake up. You want the right nutrient in there. If you have a high phosphorus level, then you can probably use, uh, you can probably just go with the green chalker actually, because it's only a 1% phosphorus. So you could actually replace this with the green chalker if you wanted to, to get some quick nutrients in there. But that's all we're doing. That's our jumpstart program. We provide a little bit of nutrient in there so that when, this, when the grass starts to wake up, it's like, oh wow, there's plenty of food sitting here. And that's why I have a green lawn before anyone else in the neighborhood. There's nothing else to do with it. Oh, man, that wind is chilly out here. It ain't 70 degrees today. So I'm gonna go get out uh, the John Deere and probably um, the big true cut. And we might start cutting this grass down first, as I thought. Uh, uh. So it's been sitting here all winter. And no, I don't leave a trickle charge on it. And no, I don't even disconnect it. I'm a bad person. 
So uh, I've got the battery charger hooked up to the John Deere battery. We'll let that sit for a couple hours, give it a charge, and then we'll fire it up. And while that's going on, I'm going to get the true cut out and start it up, I hope. Uh, so unfortunately, when we had to go down to the beach house to take care of all of our stuff, I didn't get time to treat <laughs> winter treat all these things. Let's we'll see what happens. This isn't going to end well today. So I like to use the big true cut. It's a big heavy beast. It's too heavy really for that green fine grass, but it's great for when you have to do a rough cut project like this. Normally what I tell someone is get out there with something like a John Deere or a rotary mower and take your grass down as low as you can, then go out with something like your real mower, your McLean. Remember, real mowers don't like to cut dry, dry grass. They liked it to be a little bit wet. So it's not a bad idea too, is if you're out here with dry, just totally dry grass, you can actually come out with a hose and mist an area and get it a little bit wet. Cause these blades don't like to burn. You'll actually start to smell some smoke sometimes. Again, real mowers don't like dead brown grass. They like to cut living grass that has a moisture content to it. So a lot of people ask why I often have a lawn service come by to do most of my pre-scalping. I'm not doing barbs. That's gonna be a nightmare. I'm gonna pay my lawn service, my lawn guys, to come scalpers because, <laughs> what did you just do? One pass. And? I already have to unload it. Yeah, let me show you. Here is one pass of our front and we're not taking it down to dirt. This is oh, just over three quarters of an inch. So I am pretty much at the top of this thing. Might be able to get two out of it, but it would be real tough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the grass catcher off of it. We're just gonna cut it and then I'll come back with a John Deere and we'll bag everything and that lets me drive those clippings wherever I want to on the lawn without having to put them into a wheelbarrow and then carry them somewhere else in the lawn. That's why I do it this way. Still got crap in my eyes. <laughs> I gotta tell you, man, even Ryan said, he said, man, it looks so much better when you do this. When you take your grass down low, when you understand that Bermuda grass likes to be one half inch to one inch, that's it. 
So when you scalp, you got to take it down to half of what you want your green grass to be. We want our grass to be green and three quarters of an inch. So what's half of three quarters of an inch? I mean, we got to take this basically down to dirt eventually. That's why we do the pre-scalp. The pre-scalp, as you can see, there's my foot. <laughs> Excuse my Walmart slippers. <laughs> but look at that. So there are different areas in here. And yes, as my son says, I have on these stupid shoes. They're nine bucks at Walmart, dude. I'm tired of getting my good sneakers green and crap. So everything's cleaned up. Man. And it only took, especially with Ryan helping me bag and unbagging this grass and stuff. I mean, the whole front and whole back on the John Deere maybe took about 30 minutes to suck it all up and get it perfectly clean. Looks great. Good morning. Oh, that was a long day yesterday. We didn't get down. We didn't get to put anything down, and it got down to 29 degrees last night. But let me show you what we look like. Man, it just looks so much better short. So there is the scalp lawn. You can see the ice on it. And the back looks really good too. So the back is nice and clean. It's nice and short. Um, Ryan's gonna come out, we'll get out the spreader, we'll put out PGF Balanced and the pre-emergent at the same time. And then I'll also show you, I'm gonna start to water those in a little bit before my rain event. Got it? Before my rain event, I wanna wet those and get them to start getting into the soil so that when the rain event that's coming in, it can rain as much as it wants and my stuff's not gonna move because it's gonna be locked into the soil. I can't stress that enough. Um, what else? I think that's about it. Now the pressure washing, he's just about done. He's got about just another hour of pressure washing on this fence. And then we're gonna, my stain is gonna come in next week. We're gonna go ahead and restain this fence, hit that subscribe button because I'll put that all on video. Uh, I'll do the actual jump start program on video. I got a bunch of stuff coming up, so talk to you later, Doc.